What is up, YouTube? This is Hypergon, your champ with the cat, back again for another video. And this time, we're going to be talking about the thing that's pretty much required of every YouTuber around this time of the year. That's right, we are going to be talking about Next Format's ban list. Namely, this time, the July 2015 ban list is coming up in just a few short weeks. Now, this time I decided to go a little bit more out there than I usually do. Like, with most people, what they usually do, and as I've done in the past, is they'll just name a couple of cards that they think either can go on or off the ban list and explain their reasoning. However, this time, I can also see a lot of stuff coming off, so what I'm going to show you is pretty much anything and everything I think can potentially move on the ban list, either going on or going off. I put a lot of thought into all of these things, and even though some of these aren't necessarily my opinions, they're things I can still see coming off, so I'm going to talk about those as well. But enough of this chit chat, you're here for ban list predictions, and let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so as you can see, I've organized it all rather nicely here in this uh, fancy little dev pro screen. Now I'm going to divide this up into several categories, the first of which is going to be the things that I can see going onto the ban list, which is actually not nearly that much. And then I'm going to start off with things in the extra deck I think can come back, so that's relatively small as you can see. Uh, then I'm going to go into things that I think can come back to support older archetypes that can kind of need it. Things that can come back and really won't make a difference. And then things that might come back but are a little iffier. Um, and then some conditional things that can come back. But anyway, let's go ahead and start with things that I think are going to be going, that could go onto the ban list. That's actually my little side deck section here. Starting things off, we have Masked Hero Dark Law. I cannot tell you guys how much I hate Dark Law. He just drives me up the wall. I mean, honestly, he's too good. Just to be able to be a one-sided macro and he prevents searching by banishing a random card in your opponent's hand if they do it. It's just ridiculous. And 24 is not easy to get over first turn. And let's not kid ourselves, first turn Dark Law is not exactly difficult. Now, he wouldn't bother me as much since most people play him at 1, so he's not really the card I'm expecting to get hit. If anything does get hit, what I would be expecting is this. Mask Change 2, or Mask Change 2nd, however you want to say it. This card is just ridiculous to me. The only reason that I am not so crazy about this is because it is splashable in any deck. It does not have to be heroes, and to me, masked heroes or any variation of heroes really should be limited to hero decks. This guy should not be able to come out in a Shadal deck, yet thanks to this card, he can, and it's stupid. Now if you have a Shadal person who's just teching Shadow Mist in, that's fine, that's another story. As long as he has to use regular mass change, not mass change too. So, in some way, shape, or form, I want Dark Law to be hit, but I feel like it would more likely happen through mass change too. Though, to be honest, this is more just me being spiteful than being a realistic hit. Um, so next up, we're actually going to move on to the Necroz. And the first one I have, I could see being Jin Releaser of Rituals. This guy, if we're being completely honest, needs to be banned. He wasn't that bad by himself, but with how easily Necroz can just abuse this guy, and that he's a, essentially a floodgate specifically for them, it's stupid, it's unfair, it needs to go away. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Everyone kind of knows how dumb this guy is. Now for the others, these aren't necessarily things that I think will get hit, but they're things I can see getting hit. Uh, Necroz of Trishula, I feel like, could probably go to one, and not too many people will be upset about it, just because they typically only run one Trish. But some people do run more than just the one, and those guys are kind of a pain to deal with, because I don't like having to try and work around, you know, not having a card on my field in my hand and in my graveyard at the same time, which, realistically, is bound to happen eventually. If you can avoid that, kudos to you. You have some weird-ass deck I've never even heard of. Um, but that's all I got on that. Next up is hitting Brio further down to one. Um, again, this isn't really one that I feel like is that necessary, but given that majority of the Necroz monsters are hand traps, I could easily see this guy going down a little bit. Um, again, him and Trish are kind of more just like, it could happen. Like I said, I don't necessarily think all of these are true, and I definitely know not all of these are going to happen. So in case you guys are yelling at me saying, what are you talking about, there's no way this stuff is going to happen. I know, this is more not really my prediction so much as it is just possible speculation. The one I do think is going to go 
would be Unicor, because Unicor is just ridiculous for at least how easy he is. The fact that um, you can recycle your Necroz monsters with his discard, and then when he is out, he just negates the effects of your extra deck monsters, that's a bit much for a level 4, and 23 is pretty good for a 4-star monster. I mean, most other 4-star rituals barely even hit 2k, if that. Um, that's really all I got with that. A lot of people are saying that things like Manju and Senju should probably go. Let me just go ahead and pull them up. Yeah, these guys. Uh, Senju, because he can add a ritual monster. And Manju, because he can add a ritual monster or a ritual spell. I can see why people would want them, but to me that feels kind of like what happened when, um... When Ravine got banned because the Dragon Rulers were being too good, so Dragunities got punished for it. It just seems like it's dodging the point. I feel like they kind of did the same thing with Tour Guide, but Tour Guide's a little bit harder to argue in that case, just because really Tour Guide wasn't that big of a deal before, and then when Burning Abyss came out, Tour Guide became a problem. So that one I can kind of see more, but in the case of Manju and Senju, I really don't see them going anywhere realistically. But people think they might, and honestly, if they did get hit, it really wouldn't surprise me. Next up, we have the Shadals, something I feel like needed to get hit a while ago. Even though I run these, I still agree think that they're excessive. And the three cards I can see going are Construct, because of very obvious reasons, most notably because it is the it is easily the strongest of the El Shadal monsters. And also, there's a little thing out there now, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of them, called Star Seraphs. Who am I kidding? Yes, you've heard of them. Everyone's heard of them. They're stupid. I cannot stand Star Seraphs. I feel like they should be hit in some way, but I don't know them well enough. Most people are saying Sovereignty, which... Let me just go ahead and... Stars. Sorry, I apparently can't spell. Uh, this one, the chair. Um, let's see. Let's see your hand, draw one card. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it is that the Star Stairs even work. All I know is they just push a bunch of stupid stuff out. The ones that are actually becoming a problem now are... Sovereignty and Scepter, and if either one of these guys got hit, honestly, it would not surprise me in the slightest. Uh, another one I could see easily getting hit, not nearly as hard as Construct. Construct I could see going to like 1 or 2, or actually no, not even 2, 1 or banned, honestly. Uh, another one I could see getting hit though would be Winda, because Winda is also kind of one of those problem cards. She can't be destroyed by card effects, so that makes her tricky to get around inherently, although 22 while, again, I've kind of been saying that some of these higher level things are a little bit trickier to get around. Actually, yeah, 22 is still kind of tricky first turn, if, especially with her ability to limit your special summons to once per turn. So, with a lot of decks for them to be able to get off, like a Synchro or an Xyz summon, they need to be able to get off at least two special summons in a turn. So, pretty much the only way that you can get around this is if you're also running a fusion deck, which really means Mirror Match, realistically. Or, you know, Dark Law, I guess. Um... But I could just see that happening. One of these guys, I could see Winda going maybe to like one or two and Construct being banned. Uh, another, the main one I personally think needs to be hit is Shadal Fusion. Now, people have been saying that if this card gets hit, it'll kill the deck. I disagree. I think it'll make the deck balanced. I mean, the fact that this thing can pull out an, a fusion monster by using materials from the deck is just a bit ridiculous. Especially with the caliber of these things you can get. I mean, come on, look at these two. Just pull out materials from the deck. You could have a bare hand as long as your opponent exceeds summons or something first turn. You can Shadal Fusion into one of these guys even with no monsters in your hand. And that's stupid. Plus, it gets off their the Shadal Materials effect, and so they'll just plus like crazy. It's not like this would kill the deck completely. You still have things like El Shadal Fusion, which is a quick play spell card, and Nef Shadal Fusion, which can get you any of the attribute ones just by it existing, so it's not like the deck would be dead, it'd just be slow down and, in my opinion, fair. Alright, uh, next up we have the Burning Abyss, and I don't really see too much on these guys. They already got Tour Guide against them, if anything, I could see Dante getting hit to, like, one, maybe. He is pretty good for a generic, and honestly, I feel like it could happen, because he is kind of ridiculous to get past. Especially with them being able to just go straight into defense mode after attacking, so... 25 walls are kind of tricky to get past. And Fire Lake I could easily see getting hit just because this is one of the dumbest cards they've ever created with how much this deck pluses off of discards and just sending them to the graveyard in generally. It's just dumb. It does not need to happen. This 
can go to one or get banned. It's just stupid. The deck can generate enough plusing without this, and this is just excessive. Now, the final meta deck that I can see getting hit is the Teller Knights. And I don't know the Teller Knights that well, other than just my burning hatred of them. But what I do know is that either Altair, Neb, or Vega needs to get hit. Because these guys are pretty much the centerpieces. The fact that they're all at three is a little ridiculous. I'm not saying they all need to be, like, severely hit. Like, just putting them at two would be sufficient for me. Maybe, I don't know, the Neb at one or something. I don't know. Or, no, Vega at one. I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Just because he special summons from the hand, that's a little bit much. And it's not like she's not, I don't know, recyclable or anything. <clears throat> Altair. And the only other thing I can see happening with these guys is them getting Rhoda hit to one or two. Just because a lot of decks can abuse this, and then plus heroes, honestly, I could see easily getting this card hit. Just because there's so many good level 4 warrior monsters that it almost kind of beckons it to happen. That's really all I got for things going on. Everything else on this list is going to be consisted of cards that I could easily see coming off of the list. Now moving on, we are going to go to the extra deck cards I could see coming back. Of them, we're going to start off with Wind Up Carrier Zen Mei. Question for you guys. Why is this card still banned? Like, I get that it's one of the key pieces in wind-ups, and just for, for what this thing does, I understand that it's a bit ridiculous. But are we really acting like wind-ups are still a threat? Like, really? The best thing that they have presently in the game is Zen, is, uh, Zen Mains, and does he really seem that much play anymore? I mean, some people use them, but realistically, not a lot of people are using Zen mains, and I don't see why Zen Magi can't come back. I'm not saying wind-ups are bad, I'm just saying they're not really good enough to warrant banning Zen Magi. I feel like this card can come back, just to give Zen Ma um, sorry, wind-ups a little bit of a push. Just see if we can make them relevant again. They're not going to be tier 1, they're not. They've had their time for that, so I could easily see this guy coming back. Um... But just to like one, maybe two. Hell, it could go back to three for all I care. Um, but realistically, I can see come back to like one or two. Next up, we have Thousand Eyes Restrict. Okay, same question as I asked earlier. Why is this still banned? There's no reason for this. This is not even a good card anymore. For those of you who either have never heard of this card because you are newer to the game, or just completely forgot about what it does because it's been eons since this thing has been banned, let me remind you. Other monsters cannot change their battle position or attack. Fine. Once per turn, you can equip one monster your opponent controls to this card. One max. Alright, fine. This card's attack and defense become the same as the equipped monsters. Okay, I guess. If this card would be destroyed by a battle, the equipped monster is destroyed instead. Now, hold on a second. I thought monsters couldn't attack. So, if they can't attack, then what's even the point of that last effect? I get it's supposed to be a union-ish sort of thing, but if monsters can't even attack to begin with, that last effect's kind of pointless. Pretty much, this thing was the early beta 001 version of a card we know now as number 101, Silent Honor Arc. And Silent Honor Arc, if we're being completely realistic, is a much better card than Thousand Eyes Restrict. Thousand Eyes Restrict requires Relinquished and Thousand Eyes Idol, one of which is just some level 1 piece of crap normal monster that doesn't do anything, and the other one is just some, um... God, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> um, ritual monster that, again, you'd have to base an entire deck around to be good, and it basically does the same thing. So, really, might as well just want to rank 4 deck and just load a bunch of 101s in there and probably get a better effect for it. Now, the only thing I can see this guy being used for, honestly, would be an instant fusion target. So you can get it out, use its effect, take a monster, and then when it dies at the end phase, the monster will fall off and go into the graveyard. But... I feel like there's a bunch of other cards that can do literally the same thing with getting rid of a monster and not cost a thousand life points. Hell, Dark Corp would be better. For those of you who forgot what that is, let me show you real quick. Just general spell card, discard one card, target face up monster on the field, banish it. it still has a cost, but I feel like it's a much easier cost and it doesn't waste extra deck space for this. People really want to make a Thousand Eyes Restrict deck, you know what, let them. At this point, it's honestly kind of a worthless card, and it can go back to three, and I'm willing to bet anything no one will play this, other than the people trying to relive the nostalgia of it. So, this card can honestly come back, and I would not care. It won't make a difference, guys. Next up, we have Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Now, this card, I feel, is unjustly there. It can go back to one. 
Why can it go back to one? Because we have three of them already, and this one is honestly easier to get out. Now, I will be the first to admit that this one's a little bit stronger just because this one doesn't require they all be in there. You can choose which ones to get rid of, and you can do up to that. So if your opponent only has a card in the hand and a card on the field, but nothing in their graveyard, you can still activate this Trish. You know, it catches, you need a tuner and two non-tuners to get it to level 9 get this thing out. So we would give, I guess, Synchron's a decent option, but realistically, how many other decks would be able to work with this? Not that many? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. There's no real reason for this thing not to be here while this thing is. It's just stupid. Give Trish back to us. He's not that relevant anymore. You gave us a better version. Just give us the original, please. Just at one. That's all we need. And finally, for the extra deck, I can see Dark Strike Fighter coming back. A little bit more. Just because after his errata, he wasn't as busted as he used to be. And honestly, I don't see this thing being used anymore. Even if it goes up to two... The most you could do is activate this effect, things effect twice in one turn. Probably through something stupid like Level Eater bringing it down and then bringing back the Glow Up Bulb and resyncing for another one or something stupid like that. But even then, how much is that really going to get you? Dark Strike Fighter is just not what he used to be simply because he can no longer deal out OTKs. He can only do slight burn damage, which I'm not saying Dark Strike Fighter is bad. I'm just saying he kind of suffers from the same issue Goyo does. He's not the monster he used to be. He used to be a lot worse and a big threat. Now, he's just kind of there, really. So, nothing personal, Dark Strike Fighter. It's just your time has been served. But you can still come back. Just don't expect to be played. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the extra deck. Pretty straightforward. Now we're going to move on to cards that need to come off the ban list to support older decks. Whether they need it or not. First one... Hashtag 2015 Freeman Nigga Stratos. There he is. Why is Stratos banned? I don't understand this. Apparently he's doing something in the OCG, but it's nothing I've heard about that's actually a problem or game-breaking. Plus, it's not like the elemental heroes are short on search cards. They have uh, Rhoda, Ecole, they have Shadow Mist now. I'm pretty sure Blazeman pretty much counts because he does the same thing. Prisma can imitate monsters he needs to. Why is Stratos banned? They don't. We don't even really need Stratos for the sake of a search. We need him for the sake of a wind monster in the deck that doesn't suck. We need a not avian. Especially since they have a new mass hero coming out who is a wind attribute. So this would be a great time to bring out Stratos, guys. There's, again, no reason for him not to come back. I promise you, this will not make heroes any more busted. They're plenty busted as it is, thanks to our good friend Darklaw down here. We made it clear I don't like Darklaw yet. Anyway, that's all I got for that. Just, you, you guys know, everyone wants Stratos back. Just bring back Stratos. There's no reason not to. Next up, Gear Gear Gear. Again, same with the windups. I don't see why Gear Gear is still being considered a threat. Yes, it can do some crazy things. No, I don't think it's any worse than any other rank 4 spam deck out there. These guys can't do... Gear Gear cannot do anything Satellar Knights cannot do. So why is this still a problem? They cannot do anything that that ridiculous Entermage Thousand Blades thing I've been seeing on DN so much can do. Gear Gear is not a threat anymore. Just give them back Gear Gear Gear. Just put it at 2 or something to test it out. And if it proves true that it's not doing anything, give it to him at 3. Their time in the sun is over, guys. We we don't need to keep acting like it's a threat. Next up is a card I almost lamented putting on here, just because I have a bad history with them. But I feel like Insectors have served their time well enough. Not well enough to warrant Dragonfly coming back, but I can see Hornet coming back to two, maybe three, but probably not for another format. They can test him out, bring it up. As everyone's been saying, Destruction's not really a big deal anymore, so I could easily see Hornet coming back to at least two to see how that works it would just give them a little bit more consistency and it's not like insectors are really doing anything now so it might give them some love it's not wrong showing old decks love speaking of showing old decks love this is where the hate's gonna come in i can feel it now i'm sure you guys noticed that i have both archfiend and barrier on here let me disclaim you something real quick i don't think they're both coming back this is an either or they do if they both come back i would be stunned i'm expecting either archfiend to go up to two or Barrier to go up to 2. Archfiend just to add a little bit more consistency to the deck so it's not considered dead anymore. 
but still wouldn't be broke because it wouldn't be three. And Barrier can go up to two as long as Archfiend stays at one, because realistically, that's the only target that Barrier has to trigger its effect. There is Doom Dragon, but he's not being used all that often, so I don't see the big deal with that. Either one of these, but not both. If both come back, I don't even know what to say. I'll be happy, but I'll be confused. And finally, I can see Gateway of the Six coming back. Yes, I know, this card is busted with Samurai, Six Sams. They can search like crazy. Realistically, what have Six Sams been doing? Is there any reason they can't have this card back to at least one? I mean, it's the same logic with Ravine. I mean, that came back to one, and our drinking unit is killing anything? I mean, mine, arguably, but... They're not coming back to what they used to be, so there's no real reason why Gateway can't come back and do the six, same thing for Six Samurais. They're still a decent deck, they could just use a little bit more push. And I don't see anything wrong with giving them that push. Now, realistically, that's all I can see in terms of returning cards for old archetypes. I don't see too, too much coming back. So now we're going to move on to cards that can come back and really will not change a damn thing. Starting with Sangen and Witch of the Black Forest. As I've asked so many times already, why are these cards still banned? What are they doing? Nothing. They would do nothing. Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest would require you to set them before you can search them out. Now, I realize that they're generic, unlike things like Giant Rat or Shining Angel, which search out things within their set attribute. However, even cards like that are considered somewhat outdated and pointless, especially if you consider the fact that Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest add to the hand. At least cards like Giant Rat and Shining Angel special summon them, so they have some use. These guys, I just can't see doing anything. Nowadays, set, set one card phase down and pass is kind of a waste of a turn. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but realistically, you can get OTK'd hard, and that card you add will be worthless. So, I don't see... These guys can go back to three, and it won't make a damn difference. Another card that can come back up, that recently got, came back is Sinister Serpent. This card was eroded in order to make it fair. Unfortunately, by making it fair, it also became unusable. So I could see this thing going up to two, it not being quite as bad. It still wouldn't make a difference. This is going to realistically come back to three and no one's going to play it just because it's not as broken as it used to be. But that's fine. It doesn't need to be broken anymore. It's been re-eroded so that it's playable without being busted. Now, do I think it's going to come back? Honestly, no. I think they're going to keep it there along with all the other cards that they re eroded But, hey, like I said, I'm speculating everything I can think of realistically coming off. Even if I don't think it will, it wouldn't surprise me if it did. Now, a card I've been preaching that needs to come back to for a while is Neospatian Grand Mole. Why isn't Mole any more than one? What is Mole going to do, really? He's a compulse that requires the use of your normal summon. Is this thing really going to be doing anything with that? Now don't get me wrong, I've been mulled to death plenty of times in the past, but that was before the current meta, and when I was still relatively new to the game. Now, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be intimidated by a mole that much. I can get past this thing pretty easily, and asking anyone else who knows what they're doing in this game. So, why then? Is mole still at 1? No idea. Can it come back to two and not threaten anything? Probably, yeah. So, let's give it a shot. I mean, for those of you guys that think that some of my predictions so far have seemed odd or questionable, need I remind you guys that we just recently got past the format where Snatch Steel was limited to one. So, yeah, if they're willing to do stuff like that, as far as I'm concerned, anything's fair game. That's what I'm here to talk about. Anything. Next up, we have Night Assailant. As I like to call him, Slightly Better Maneater Bug. Because realistically, that's all that he is. He does the same thing that Maneater Bug does, but when this card is sent from the hand to the graveyard, you can bring back a flip effect monster and add it to your hand. Okay, so what, you're gonna throw this in Shoulda Dolls, maybe? That's really all I can see happening with that. I, they're not gonna do a whole lot past that, realistically. Um, I mean, the only way I can see this thing being run is if most of my predictions down here come true, which... To be honest, the only reason I could even see the, any of these things getting hit is so that these guys can, so that Konami can promote the Zephras and kind of make these things worse. So you need to run the Zephyr cards to make them suck less, I guess. And also because most of these packs aren't even sold anymore, so I could see them being hit for that reason. 
And for that extent, again, is Night Assailant really going to be a viable counter for that? No. No one runs Night Assailant. No one will run Night Assailant. It's not a problem. Okay. Getting close to the end for the uh, cards that will make a damn difference. One of which is kind of pushing it a bit. Deep Sea Diva. I don't realistically see Deep Sea Diva doing a whole lot other than just kind of boosting mermails a bit. So I guess you could argue it belongs in the first section. But it's not directly part of the archetype, so I didn't count it. But Deep Sea Diva is not going to do too, too much. If nothing else, it's just going to make things like Armades a little bit easier. And is that really that big of a deal? There's plenty of decks that can bring out things like Armades or TG Hyper Librarian. It doesn't make a difference. There's not too many level 5 synchros that are that big of a threat, so I can't really see a big deal for that. Or really anything level 5 and lower in terms of synchros. None of them are really too game breaking, so I think it'd be fine. And next up, we have Tragodia. We have Gores back up to 3. Why isn't Trag up to 3? People tend to run Gores more than they do Trag, and I guess you could argue Trag is potentially more versatile, but the problem is, it's just the potential for it. If you don't have the ability to make this thing work right, then he's going to be kind of useless. So, I mean, even I've tried running Trag in a few decks just to add the versatility to it, and it's never once paid off. So, I'd honestly rather just go with Gores. So, sorry Trag, you're just kind of there, I guess. And last but not least, in terms of cards, I can see coming back and not making too, too big of a difference. And again, is kind of pushing it like Deep Sea Diva, is Rescue Raddit. At 1, no one's going to run this card. At 2, people might run this card. Probably not too, too much. Maybe enough to see the return of Dino Rabbits in its slightly weaker form, but honestly, are Dino Rabbits even going to do anything nowadays? I'm willing to bet Dino Rabbits aren't going to do anything. Plus, it would just kind of give some consistency to some decks that do run normal monsters, like, say, normal Pendulums. You know, because they need so much help, but... My point stands. It wouldn't be surprising to me if Rescue Rabbit came back. It just seems like an inevitable choice. Now, that's it for cards that I can see coming back and not making a difference. We're going to segue into things that are going to be a little iffier. Things that might make a difference. Uh, the first of which is actually Rescue Cat. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that this thing isn't busted as hell. I'm not going to do that. I realize why this thing is banned. The ability to bring out two level 3 or lower beasts from the deck, especially with how many beast tuners there are now, is stupid. You can Xyz, you can Synchro, you can do a bunch of ridiculous things with Rescue Cat. But as I said with Deep Sea Diva, how much of that really matters nowadays? Back in the day, yeah, that was a ridiculous idea for a deck, and it was busted as hell. But nowadays, it's not really that bad anymore. I could honestly not care if someone played a Rescue Cat. And honestly, can we not do anything about Rescue Cat at all? We can't stop it in any way? We can't affect Valor, Breakthrough Skill, Fiendish Chain, any of that to this thing? Come on, guys. It's Rescue Cat. Let's not act like this is the good old days where he was a threat. He's not. We can deal with a Rescue Cat now. There's plenty of means around this thing. Next up, we have two tuners, Fishboard Blaster and Mind Master. Now, the reason I can see these guys coming back is for one reason and one reason only. They are very specific to what they have to work with. Fishboard Blaster can only work in a water deck. No other deck can run, so Synchrons can't use this guy or nothing. So, that pretty much means Mermails will have a tuner. Okay, and... They can arguably already use uh, the other Fishborg monsters and get some decent tuning action off, but for this one, I just don't see it being that big of a deal. It'll just give them a little bit more versatility, and there's not really that big of a deal with it. It's... I mean, I can kind of see why just because this thing always comes back, but again, it can only work in a water deck, so, you know, whatever. I really don't think it'd be that big of a deal. Next up is Mind Master, who can... Pay life points, tribute a psychic monster, except for himself, and then special summon a level 4 or lower psychic monster from the deck in attack mode. Now, again, the same issue is that this thing can be used over and over again. The problem, who's using psychics? Like, no, seriously, who is actually using psychics that this would be a viable option for? Are we really going to be running Mind Master in, say, what are they called? Uh, Ritual Beast Namers? I think there's some psychics in there. Are there not psychics in there? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if there's any psychics in Ritual Beast Namers. But either way, they're a fusion deck, so I don't see that happening. I guess you could put them in, like, Gustos or 
banish psychics or whatever, but I mean, honestly, I just don't see Mindmaster being a terribly big threat. I mean, he's really just not. Him and Fishborg Blaster, I feel like, are too specific for what they need to be in in order to actually be relevant. Now, I could be wrong, but again, we've had Snatch Steel back, so I really don't see why that's like considered such a big deal anymore. I, I feel like we can work around these things now, and it's not as big of a deal because the game has just evolved so much. Anyway. Okay, now we're moving on to something I feel needs to definitely be addressed. Back row hate. And we're talking big back row hate. Not Galaxy Cyclone, not MST, not Night Beam, none of that shit. No. I'm talking about these three cards right here. Heavy Storm, Harpy Feather Duster, and Cold Wave. Now, do I think Cold Wave is coming back? No. What I'm saying is we need something to deal with back row. Because it's gotten to the point where some decks like Burning Abyss and Satellar Knights can just set five and know that they're going to be good for pretty much the rest of the game. And it's stupid for other decks that don't abuse back row quite so heavily to have to try and deal with that. It's just ridiculous, honestly. And I don't think it needs to be that way. Now again, Cold Wave, I feel like, is kind of the odd man out in this one. Realistically, I can see Heavy Storm or Harpy Feather Duster coming back. I'm not really sure which, because I've heard good arguments for either way. Heavy Storm, because you get punished for it too, but Harpy's Feather Duster, just so Pendulum decks don't have something to abuse. I could really see either one. Potentially both, who knows? I'm Again, I'm not saying that any of this is going to happen. I could be completely wrong. Nothing on my list could be correct. I doubt it, but who knows? Um... So yeah, just some kind of mass back row hate, just so I don't have to pop cards one at a time to deal with back row or let them activate it. I want to be able to have moments where I can punish my opponent for second five. That needs to be a thing again. It, It's better than you guys think. Okay, next up we have Premature Burial. Now, this one for me is kind of iffy, because I do understand reasons why this is somewhat of a bad idea. However, it's also noted that this is an equip spell and it costs light points to use it so why can't we do it i mean it's not like it's difficult to counter you know they play it you chain mst problem solved and they still have to pay their 800 life points um so yeah i mean it's more realistic for me than say monster reborn coming back just because um, this one has to be your graveyard specifically and Monster Reborn to be any graveyard. So for me, if we're going to be getting back a, a Monster Reborn type card, this is the one I can see. And I feel like it might be a little bit better than Soul Charge, because at least with this you can still attack, so who knows? It might be a viable card again. You never can tell with this game. Next up we have Symbol of Heritage. Can someone please tell me why this card was hit to one in the first place like i truly have no idea why this card was hit uh for those of you who may not know what this is uh you can only activate when there are three monster cards with the same name in your graveyard you can select one of those monsters special summon and equip it with this card and then if this card is destroyed the equip monster is also destroyed the only thing i can realistically see being abused with this is harpies and are we really gonna sit here and pretend that harpies are a big deal like really <laughs> It just seems random, and amongst the Monster Reborn-ish cards I'm talking about right now, it just feels like the one that makes the least sense. I feel like this can honestly go back to three, and like, who was even playing this to begin with? I, I'm genuinely confused why this was ever a thing. The only things I can really see happening with it would be, again, Harpies and maybe Cyber Dragons, but are Cyber Dragons counted as that in the graveyard? Hold on, let me check that real quick. Cyber... Okay, Cyber Dragon Dry is a good example. Um, on the field or in the graveyard, yeah, okay. I, okay, I, I think I can kind of see why now. Um, but regardless, it just feels like an odd choice. With that in mind, now that Cyber Dragon's going to use it, maybe bring it back to two for the number of decks that can use it, but it's, it's not like this is an easily abusable card. This is still kind of a random hit to me. And the last one, and least likely in my opinion, Rekindling. Honestly, how many um, how many fire decks are there out there that can use this card? Not that many? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought was the case. Truly, this is one of the most perplexing things to me, is that this is still only a 1. Now, again, I realize why it was. It's a hilariously busted card for the right deck, but the problem is... 
the right deck is a little outdated now, and it really wouldn't make too, too big of a difference. I mean, who's really going to be using this again? Lovels? Uh, how often are Lovels seen again? Yeah, last I checked, they're, uh, somewhat outdated there. So it just seems like kind of an odd choice to me that rekindling would still be banned at this point. I mean, is there really any reason why it is? I don't know. Maybe I'm just not... Oh, shit. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so, anyway, moving on, we now have what I like to consider the Dragon Ruler section, or the no longer Dragon Ruler section. Starting this off, we have Super Rejuvenation. This card was really only a problem because Dragon Rulers could discard dragons at an absurd rate, and really made it so that this card was easily abused. Now, the only thing you really abuse this deck easily would be Hieratics, and they'd probably only get a couple of draws off of it. Nothing too, too overpowered. So, I'm not saying this card should come back to, like, 3 or anything. Probably 1 would be a safe place to start, but I can see it easily going up to 2 and then probably getting unbanned so long as the rulers stay that way as well. But, yeah, I just don't see this card being this threat that it used to be. It's really not that big of a deal anymore from what it once was. Next up, we have Sacred Sword of Seven Stars. We've already tried experimenting with this going back up to two, and really, I don't think anyone is using it. I mean, the only decks that can really use Sacred Sword of Seven Stars at this point are Red Eyes, and, um... Yeah, it's the only one really coming to mind, Red Eyes. <laughs> I'm not saying there aren't other decks that can't use it, but as far as I'm concerned, this is really the only prominent deck that can use it, and honestly, I don't see it being that big of a threat. Uh, last but not least, we have Gold Sarcophagus. This one, to me, is extremely unlikely to get any higher than one, but at one, no one is using it. Because the main thing with this was, again, with Dragon Rulers, being able to banish a ruler and use it to search out a dragon of that same attribute. But with Rulers banned, who's using Gold Sarcophagus? I'm not aware of anyone personally, but... Hey, I could be wrong. I really don't know. I'm not keeping up with Gold Sark. I personally stopped running it once the rulers got banned, so... I don't know. It, to me, it just seems like kind of a card that's served its purpose and can honestly come back and probably still not see too much play and not really be a threat. That's it for the uh, quote-unquote ruler section. Moving on, we now have what I consider to be the um, most unlikely of cards, but things I can still see kind of coming off a little bit. The first is Allure of Darkness. Honestly, I don't see why this card isn't one. I get that it's a good uh, draw card for dark decks, but the idea of having to banish a dark monster from your hand or discard your entire hand if you don't get one just seems like it's not even that great of a card to me. I mean, you have to willingly get rid of one of your monsters, because I can't think of a dark deck that works around banishing, so that's just straight up a minus right there. And then, if you don't have any dark monsters, you get rid of your hand. And if you're running this in a dark deck, the odds are that means you just lost a bunch of spells and traps. So, I really don't see why Allure can't go up to any higher than just one. I'm not saying go back to 3, maybe try it out at 2, see if it's game breaking in any way, but as far as I'm concerned, Allure is not that big of a deal. It has a fair enough cost that you do need to be careful when playing it, and if you do run into too many, it can backfire and bite you in the ass a little bit. But, I don't know, that's just me. Next up, we have Monster Gate. I personally cannot see this card coming back unless Konami decides they really want to support the Infernoid cards. Given that we already have reasoning up to three, there's really no reason why we can't do the same thing with Monster Gate. It's going to accomplish the same thing. Um, the only catch is that this one requires that you tribute a monster first, so they need to be able to actually get something out first and then be able to go at it. Instead of just reasoning where they just say, alright, call a number, and if you get it, good for you, I don't care, and if you don't get it, great for me, and yeah. It just seems like Monster Gate's the actually more fair one, so I don't get why this got is still at one while reasoning is at three for these guys it just makes little sense to me i feel like this should be the one that's a little bit higher and if they do want to support infernoids this would be an excellent way to do it via ban list next up we have solemn judgment 
this one for me is again really really iffy just because to me the paying half your life points thing seems like a fair enough trade-off i mean just look at things like a hero lives that's a very hefty toll and can often cost you the game if you don't play it right same with solemn judgment if you're not careful with it that big gate may just end up hurting you more than it helps because if you play that too early that can be four thousand life points just gone but on the other hand, if you play it late game, that could be very few life points depending on how many you have left. If you only have 500 and that's just 250 you're losing, that's not that big of a deal. You can recover from that. And honestly, if that was as little as you had, you're still within cowboy range, so it's not that big of a deal. It really does just depend on what it is that you're aiming for. If you know how to use your back row, Judgment can be a powerful ally. But if you don't, it can be one of the biggest hindrances to the game, so... As far as I'm concerned, that makes it a viable card. At least at one. Any higher than that, I think, would be kind of ridiculous. Alright. Next up, we have Dimensional Fisher and Macrocosmos. This, to me, is one of the iffiest things I have on here. And that is just because of the um, Ritual Beast Tamers and how they love to be banished. If these go up, I'm always seeing them going up to two. But if they do go up to 2, then I could see that deck just exploding in popularity because these cards are immensely helpful to them. But at the same time, it feels like other than, if these cards are only at 1, no one's going to be running them. Which I guess is kind of the point, but again, there's plenty of ways around these things with all the back row hate that we have now through forms of things like MST, Galaxy, Cyclone, and Nightbeam. It's not like it's impossible to get around these cards. It's just kind of tricky and if you know how to do it then it's not that big of a deal you can get around these cards um but again i'm not saying i could see them both going up to two i could see one of them and if any i guess i could see dimensional fisher um or actually no probably macrocosmos would be the better one to go up to two but I don't know, either one honestly wouldn't surprise me too much, but I, this isn't, these aren't the cards I would be holding my breath for changing, this is more just kind of, this is more on the speculation than the prediction part, the first part of it was more predictions, this is more of the speculation than anything. Next up we have a card you guys might have actually forgotten about, we have the Wall of Revealing Light. This has been on the ban list for quite some time, and honestly, I think at this point it's lost its steam and can come back and not be a threat. The way it works is that to activate this card, you pay multiples of a thousand life points, and just doesn't matter how many. You can pay eight thousand if you want to in game yourself. I wouldn't recommend it, but um, at that point, none of your opponent's monsters with an attack equal to or less than the life points you paid can attack. Now, I know that sounds hilariously overpowered, but that requires a substantial amount of life points to be paid in order for it to be relevant. At least three thousand. At least more if you want to be extra safe because there are things like star eater that can get over this so you do need to bear that in mind plus if you mst this thing or galaxy's icon it it's just gone and there's nothing your opponent can do they've lost those life points so even if this is run at two i don't see it being run at two i just don't think it needs to be at one anymore it just feels a little like, pointless Nothing else, it would add consistency to anyone who actually wants to use Wall of Revealing Light for whatever reason. It just feels like a card that's been on there for too long and probably needs to come back off. Will it? Probably not, but just saying. Next up, we have Compulsory Evacuation Device and Torrential Tribute. I put these on here just because, honestly, of the sort of holy quartet of back row hate, including Bottomless and Solemn Warning. These two are by far the weaker ones, and I could easily see them getting knocked up to two. Specifically, Torrential Tribute. Compulse, I feel, is still a little bit better just because it doesn't destroy, while Torrential does. The main reason I could see Torrential coming back would be to kind of balance out Pendulums. And let's not kid ourselves, Pendulums do need a, a good balancing out. They are a little much. But I couldn't see something like Bottomless going up to two because I feel like that would be a little too much. Torrential is, like, it can punish normal decks just as easily as Pendulums, but not too, too hard. Uh, if you bottomless a Pendulum summon, that person's kind of screwed, and I can't see them wanting to kill off Pendulums quite yet, so Torrential's where I'm placing my money. 
Compulse would be a close second for me. Now, we're going to move on to cards that I think are by far the least likely to come off, and are honestly just... This is more just me kind of shooting for the stars at this point. Starting off that list, we have Super Polymerization. Now, this one, I completely understand why this got hit. Because Shadulls down here are a little much, especially since they now have access to one of every attribute. So again, this one's really, really unlikely. But like I said, this is more in my conditional section. And the condition for this is that Shadals need to be hit hard. I'm talking like, bring out the band stick and just beat the shit out of him with it. Hard. Like, pretty much everything I said for down here, at least has to happen. At least has to happen. The only reason I could see Super Poly coming back is if it becomes essential for Shadals to even be considered relevant anymore. But even then, that's not the main reason I want Super Poly back. The main reason I want Super Poly back is actually Heroes. Because I have seen a good many Hero players use this card, and for me, that's an invaluable asset to them. Because, again, they also have an extra deck just filled with cards of every attribute. And it seems like a nice little hidden weapon. And I don't mind it being used like that. So, again, just a one. Not, not anything excessive from that. But it just feels like a card that not a lot of decks can use, but those that can use it should be able to it's a fun little gimmick there and it's not like every deck in the world can abuse it, it wouldn't be put at one it would just make shadows and heroes you know have a little secret weapon and that's fine as far as i'm concerned you're allowed that just as shadows are it's a little too good and i don't feel like we can safely do that until shadows do get hit so sorry heroes your fate is kind of in their hands assuming konami and i have the same logic Next up, we have a card that has been being requested for quite some time. Dark Magician of Chaos, or DMC, if you will. Now, I personally don't think this card can come back, but that's just me. However, everyone else says that it can, so here's my sort of condition. I don't know if this card got eroded or not in the OCG. I honestly don't remember if this is one of them. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, but I could be wrong. If it was, I could see it coming back. At least to one. And honestly, regardless, I feel like this card will inevitably come back to one eventually. Especially since this thing doesn't even have like an easy special summon means. It just kind of does... It, it just it summons like anything else so you do have to kind of work around that but there are a lot of means of special summoning spellcaster type monsters so i don't think that'd be an issue plus honestly the whole um banish cards that this thing destroys again is solely dependent on it being able to get off battles and there are plenty of ways to stop that like mirror force dimensional prison um storming mirror force when that eventually comes out for us i'm hyped uh, sorry um but yeah, to me it's always seemed a little excessive, but looking at it realistically, I could see it coming back, errata or no errata, but it to me it just seems like the least likely card to come back. Now for the most conditional card. Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. This card is so stupid. I realize that it got eroded. However, the problem is it only got eroded over in the OCG. Despite the fact that we got a bunch of re-eroded cards over here, including Sinister Serpent, Exchange of the Spirit, and, and so on and so forth, Chaos Emperor Dragon was not one of them. So, this guy has a couple of conditions he has to meet. The first, he needs to be re-eroded over here. If we cannot get him back as he is now, that is not happening. However, if he does get his eroded effect, which I'm not even entirely sure what is, but I have heard it is more, um... <clears throat> fair, then I'd be willing to have him back at one, as with the other super conditional cards. However, he also would inherently need a reprint, and I guess I could see that happening in the Battle City pack that's going to be coming out relatively soon, or maybe in the Waking the Dragons one, but that seems extremely unlikely. But that's really all I can see for him coming back. If those two things don't happen, then fanboys, I'm sorry. 
Chaos Emperor Dragon is staying right where he is. And that's actually it for my little ban list prediction. Um, now, if I had to... Like I said, I don't think all these are going to happen. If I had to be realistic here, the ones I could easily see happening would be uh, Stratos, Gateway, one of the Infernity cards, Zangan, Witch, Mole, um, Rescue Rabbit, Night Assailant, one of the back row hates, uh, Premature Burial, uh, Sacred Sword and Gold Sark, maybe Solemn Judgment, and again, maybe Polly, but only if the Shadals get hit. And honestly, I can easily see the Shadals getting hit. I feel like it's about their time. Everything in my extra deck thing, I truly believe. So these guys I'm really hoping for. And then amongst the things I see going on, again, I can easily see the Shadals getting hit. Their time's kind of passing. Burning Abyss, maybe. They still got something that came out in Cross Souls, so they might. So Tellernats I can see getting hit. Necros I can see getting hit. But those are mostly just because of the Zephyras and Konami needing them to be used. So they need to sell more Cross Souls. So if they hit these that are no longer selling, then they could easily push like, well, I mean, there's the Zephyras and you can use them to boost the deck and we wouldn't have a whole lot of choice. Um, I guess I could see some Ritual Beast Tamer hits for the same reason, but I'm not expecting that one at all. And Heroes, uh, realistically, no, that's more just me griping over my hatred of Dark Law, but whatever. That's all I got for you guys this time. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe as always. And until next time, peace.